Galactic Standard Date Year 11356 Day 96 Sol Standard Date 4th of the 8th 3267 Sylvan had left the defence of the massive territory belonging to the Rosarian Alliance. He picked a set of coordinates and created a rift. On his way to his destination, he decided to read over the information that the Rosarians had gathered for Bastlus. The world he was heading to belonged to the Devouring Swarm. In his time as an admiral, he had been involved in a very few battles with them, but they each left a deep impression. They moved as if they were all of one mind. Senior biologists had actually considered that they might be a true hive mind. The survival of the colony was the name of the game with them. They could use just about any strategy, as long as it resulted in less loss for the colony. There are barely even any who have survived ground wars against them. Their secretive ways have made sure that the only thing potential enemies found out about them was what they could glean through spies or battle. Since spies don't work on hive minds, it wasn't even attempted. Thus, all the GC or feel it had was what was known from war. The information gleaned from the Rosarian should be of great insight. He brought up the Rosarian information on the swarm and began reading. So, they have had limited dealings with the Rosarians, and those have been through psychic proxies? They never saw the swarm in person? So, they are psychic. They can harness the veil. Hmm. He stopped walking and crossed his arms as he thought. This information alone is worth a ton. What else do they have? He looked back for the information. Huh. The Rosarians actually found a possible name other than Devouring Swarm. They called themselves Tovere? Or is that the name of a person? Well, if it's a person, then that implies that they aren't a hive mind, so it has to be their race name. Other than that, it doesn't look like the Rosarians had much else in them, just possible world locations and some minor xenobiology notes. He minimized the hard light tablet and resumed his walk through the veil. He reached his exit point and opened the rift. A clean-cut circle appeared in front of him, and he peered through into the dark void as he tried to spot the planetary system of these coordinates. He found the sun and began looking through the orbiting planets. The fourth planet from the sun here was supposed to be their world. He searched for a few minutes before he spotted a shattered ball of dust in the distance. He felt his heart twinge as he flew closer to the world. The atmosphere had already dissipated from what was left. The dust hung in the orbit of the cracked world. The world had been scorched and split into five different pieces. You can see molten metal still burning hot in the centre of the world, as it sloshed lazy out of his confines. He flew closer to see what had happened, and if it was actually an inhabited world. As he neared, he caught sight of the destroyed ships and orbitals that had been rendered into tiny pieces that were hardly distinguishable from the planet's shattered remnants. He could spot some ruined skeletons of structures on the surfaces of some of the larger pieces of the planet. He flew around to the other side and found what he assumed to be the instrument of the planet's destruction. A moon had crashed into the surface of the planet, it was at least a quarter of the planet's mass. Sylvan simply stared at the scene before him with a numb feeling, as he imagined this scene happening in purity. The hatred in his heart flicked to life again. Azarian bastards! How dare you! His body lit ablaze with flames of destructive veil energies as he hurriedly opened another rift towards the next set of coordinates. He flew straight through the veil as fast as he could to make it to the exit point. Once he opened the exit, he dashed out into the waiting void. This time, he could sense his enemies. He could feel the Azarian life forces in this system. He thrust himself towards the Azarians as fast as he could without a thought, towards checking the strength of the enemy forces, or setting a plan to defeat them. He was simply flying off in a blind rage. General Talactan grit her mandibles as she ordered the Psycorps to score the enemy lines once more. The Psychos were out of juice and running on fumes. Several had already collapsed or even died from the exhaustion. But these foes were the ancient enemy of the gods, so their sacrifice was necessary for the survival of the many. They held the will of the gods close to heart from the time of their reception. The memories of the Torak Tell live on through them. The ancient enemy was often described in the texts. With more limbs than a forest, more fangs than the Shakuru, they come from the hell that used to be heaven. They are the destroyer of all, and they hunt the gods. Talaktan and her people knew well that the stories of the gods were real. She knew well what an insurgence of the ancient enemy meant as well. The gods have returned. The Torak Tell will come to rescue their children. The only reason that the enemy would become active again is if Goddess Lunisia or her sibling gods return to fight the Dark One. We must stand tall in the face of the enemy. We must not show weakness before our gods return to bring us into their fold. With renewed vigour, she clamped her mandibles down hard, creating a loud crack, and stood on her hind legs before calling out to her sister warriors, We will not fall! Bring your mandibles to bear on the enemy's terrible flesh and destroy them. 
We will not show weakness in the face of the ancient enemy. For Nicia, for Torfei, rip and tear! <laughs>